Hello everyone. In this session, we will introduce the concept of depreciation. When I introduce this concept in class, I always ask this simple question. What comes to mind when you hear the word depreciation? Almost every time, a student will raise their hand and they will say, depreciation is a drop in market value. Great point. This is depreciation from a market perspective. Today, we would learn about a different type of depreciation. It's called accounting depreciation. So let's dive into what accounting depreciation really is and how it differs from the concept of market depreciation. Indeed, market depreciation is the increases in the value of an asset. Accounting depreciation is totally different. Accounting depreciation is a systematic process of allocating the cost that we learned about from the prior asset, from the prior session, the cost of tangible asset over the life of that asset. So when a business purchases a long-term asset, like an equipment, machinery, building, we learn how to determine the cost in the prior session. This asset, part of plant asset, is one of their features is they benefit several periods. And remember, I mentioned this. So instead of recording the entire cost as an expense in the year it's purchased, we take this cost that we learned about in the prior session and we spread the cost over the life of the asset. For example, if we purchase a delivery truck and the company paid $50,000, Initially, we record this truck on the balance sheet as an asset. And let's assume this truck will serve the company for five years. What we will do then, we'll take the 50,000 and we will spread, allocate the 50,000 over five years. So each year we will expense, through depreciation expense, 10,000 of this delivery truck. And this is what depreciation is. Depreciation is that $10,000 that goes on the income statement. Now this matching, we're matching the cost to the life of this truck. This matching of cost to the period in which the asset is used helped to provide a more accurate representation of the company's financial performance. Because this 50,000 is serving the company over five years, we have to spread the expense over five years. This is a classic illustration of the matching principle. Now, how do we compute depreciation? There are several methods, many methods for that matter. And GAAP doesn't really tell you which method to use. You could use any method as long as it's systematic and rational. We're going to learn about the straight line method, the double declining balance, units of production. There are other methods as well. Depreciation is important because it affects both the income statement through depreciation expense and the balance sheet when you reduce this asset through an account, which we'll talk about in this session called accumulated depreciation. At the end of the session, as always, I will work a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let us start by looking at the factors, at the elements that we need in order to compute depreciation. You need three factors to compute depreciation. Now you could do it with two, but if there's the third one available, you would use it. The first factor is cost. What is cost? This is what we looked at in the prior session, determining the cost of an asset. It's the purchase price plus any additional cost necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use, like transportation, installation, shipping taxes, so on and so forth. This is what we looked at in the prior recording. The second component, or a second element, is the salvage value of an asset. What is this salvage value? The salvage value is how much we think we can get for this asset, get means sell this asset, at the end of its useful life. How much are we expect to recover when we sell it? Now, in the real world, I can tell you this in the real world, 
most companies, especially when I was in practice, they assume this number is zero. And when I looked at this, with this example at the beginning of this recording, I told you it's zero to keep it simple. But we are going to be using the salvage value. So what we need to do, we need to know if there is any salvage value and what do we need with the salvage value. But what is the salvage value? The salvage value is how much the company will expect to get from this asset once this asset is sold down the road. Once that asset serves the company for five, seven, ten years, the expected amount of time. In some textbook, the salvage value is also called the residual value. That's another term for it. Again, this could be zero. This could be some assigned number. The third component is the useful life of the asset. The period of which the asset is expected to serve to be useful for the company. This could be in years, in number of units, in, hour, in, hours, in hours used. For our purposes, we're going to look at years and we're going to look at units produced to give you a, a variation of this useful life. But mo for our purposes and for a financial accounting student, it's mostly 